think I'm a replicant, don't you? Look. It's me with my mother. One of the most underappreciated aspects of sci-fi films is the attention to atmosphere. In this video, I'll be discussing ambient sound and ambient music. Both sound and music are a huge factor in the overall mood or atmosphere of a film and are just as important to movies as video itself. Let's take a look at how music can be applied to provide emphasis and emotion to Rachel's monologue in Blade Runner. Spider that lived in a bush outside your window. Orange body, green legs. Watched her build a web all summer. Then one day there's a big egg in it. The egg hatched. The egg hatched? And? And a hundred baby spiders came out. And they ate her. Uh, implants. Those aren't your memories, they're somebody else's. They're Tyrell's nieces. Okay. Bad joke. I made a bad joke. You're not a replicant. Go home. Okay? No, really. I'm sorry. Go home. Notice how the soft piano instrumental place emphasis on Rachel's monologue. Character monologues are often attributed with an instrumental such as this. In fact, you may have noticed that the same instrumental was used later in Roy's Tears in the Rain monologue. All those moments will be lost in time. Like tears. Ambient music is often used to define the tone of the film, instill a style or genre or to highlight key dialogue or occurrences, as was the case in Blade Runner. However, there are countless of unique examples. This is it! This is the answer! It says here that a bolt of lightning is going to strike the clock tower precisely 10.04 p.m. next Saturday night! A lot of the ambient sounds used in films are made using synthesizers, including the sample from Blade Runner. I tried to make my own sample using a Korg synthesizer. This is what I came up with. The only effect I used for the sample was a heavy compressor. And though I used a synthesizer, keep in mind that I could use the fan instead, or really anything. Generally, filmmakers pick the choice of which noise to use based on the setting. For example, fans or other household appliances are generally used in the space movies to mimic the inside of a space station. And a recording of people laughing, cheering, or clapping is often used at a diner scene. For ambient sound, let's take a look at 2001 A Space Odyssey to see how experimental and creative Stanley Kubrick was in choosing the source of his sound samples. In that clip, it's ambitious to use a human choir in piercing siren to represent the black monolith, yet still the message was clear that the monolith is all-powerful and mysterious. 2001 may be arguably the most influential film in regards to ambient sound, but let's take a look how influential it is with the use of silence.
Up until this point in the film, there hasn't really been a deafening silence such as this. It famously connects with the old saying that no one can hear your screams in outer space. Notice how you are taken into the perspective of the character, hearing his breathing inside the suit. Hearing the constant rhythm of each breath makes the viewer uneasy, and when the breathing stops the viewer knows something has gone wrong. You will find that later space operas often pay homage to 2001, and this scene in particular. Dr. Mann, listen to me. This is not about my life, or Cooper's life. This is about all mankind. There is a moment. That's all I have for this video. Take care, and I hope you got something out of it.